Hey folks, Jonathan here. I uh, wanted to do another video on my motorcycle trailer. I did a video on this and uh, before, and it was when I first started doing YouTube videos, and camera wasn't very good, and I didn't have a motorcycle, you know, around to load it. So we're going to do a, do one loading a motorcycle, but and it's just a small bike. It's not a real heavy bike or anything like that. But uh, the only thing, you know, that was that was available anyway. But. Uh, First off, I want to tell everybody and make sure everybody understands that I didn't build this trailer to be the next great motorcycle trailer or to be better than anybody else's or, uh, you know, to, uh, to be anything other than just a trailer for myself that I could load a bike on easy uh, without a lot of problem. And uh, because, you know, one man hauling a motorcycle is, you know, a pretty rough thing to do. It's uh, it's just a, a bunch of junk thrown together, actually, and to be truthful. And if I was going to do a motorcycle trailer and build it, you know, sort of like I did this one, or maybe go a little farther, because this trailer was already actually a boat trailer. But if I was going to build one, I would build the deck that actually lowers down and comes back up. And uh, that way you could actually put two motorcycles on it, and uh, you don't have to pop the front wheel up in. And putting a bike on this and you'll see when I do the other do the bike here at the end of the video it's not hard to get it into the wheel the only time I ever had trouble with a bike getting in to the wheel was a uh, Goldwing uh, one of the big six-owner bikes it was really heavy and it actually just took two of us so I mean we were still able to do it it just wasn't a one-man operation uh, and it makes it worse when you got the handlebars and you can't see the front wheel because of a big fairing and you know that makes that's worse i guess any any time that you're you know putting something on a on a rail or anything like that and you're trying to see the wheel but this was a boat trailer that i bought i think i gave and i and it's been years back now but i think i gave 150 dollars for the trailer and it already had new tires and wheels on it so i, I you know got a, a that was a fair price and uh i just took scrap that i had and everything here really was scrap except for the two shocks that you see right here uh, these are 91 Chevrolet shocks and you can see this one's actually walked over a little bit on the rubber which and that that's done that years ago because I used to have this thing painted blue and I painted it red so you can see I painted the rubber but I mean it hasn't hurt anything but uh, these uh, pieces of angle iron I didn't even have angle iron long enough as you can see I, I've welded, welded it together here and there and uh, to make it, and it uh, everything was just stuff that I had either laying around or, or stuff I'd picked up. The control valve was a really old control valve, and uh, came from a friend of mine's place, and it was mounted on something, and it's you know that's a really old one, so it's probably from the 60s or something. Uh, cylinder come from another buddy, uh, just an old loader cylinder of some kind, small one. And it could be military, I'm not sure. Now this was military for sure. This is an old pump. This is probably one like they would use on a maybe a lift gate or something like that. And uh, just got an old Ford solenoid on it. Uh, made the tank. It's just 4x4 four four, uh, square tubing. Welded up, welded together. And uh, seems to work good. The wheels come off an old trolley system or something that came out of a uh, factory. And, uh, and I just built it where they would uh, roll. Now this piece, as you can see, there's a weld here. There's a bolt that goes down and there's a big washer on it. It's slotted inside here. So this cannot come off. It can move back and forth a little bit and uh, you can probably see, but, uh, but there's no way that that piece can actually come out of it without taking this plate and unbolting it and sliding it off. And uh, a few things that I've had people say something about before first they didn't think this was strong enough hanging out here to uh, handle the the weight of a bike well one thing is and you'll see on this other bike the wheel only came to here on on the bike that I haul or that I load most of the time they come to here and uh, this is actually plenty you know strong enough to hold any kind of you know weight that you would put on it I mean it's when it comes to a bike there's nothing that's going to be that heavy so that was never an issue the other thing every bike I've ever hauled the tire actually fit between here now if it didn't fit between here and it needed to ride up on top it wouldn't be a big deal and 
what I do is when I get the bikes up, I actually take a strap and I run it under and around and through the wheel and then back down. And you know, as long as it's nothing that's going to hurt the paint or anything. I mean, some of these bikes are really nice, but but you know, put a padded strap there and ratchet it down, and it holds the wheel right in place. And uh, that's one way of doing it. I mean, you know, if it was a wheel I couldn't do it on, I would, you know, probably do something different. But don't have any trouble there. And this is where it slides at. You can see where it slid back and forth. But uh, this is just wear pad material. It's plastic, hard, that hard plastic. And, you know, I, I just built all this and drilled it and bolted it in. And that's scrap, too. You can see it's extra holes in it that didn't need to be there. But, and uh, parts and pieces. And I don't remember what some of this stuff came from. Uh, this is just a piece I bent and uh, made some bushings for. And these were squares. I remember somebody gave me these. They was drops off of something and I just bent them and you know I really wanted to use round but I didn't have any round so that's what I used and it's you know don't give any trouble it's not like it you know don't cut any tires or anything like that you know and uh, like I said just everything was scrap and I think that's about it besides I wanted to tell you the, the, the drum switch I'm using is actually called a barrel switch and I use it instead of solenoids on the winch and you know, when you're in the record business, you don't, if you do a lot of winching, you'll learn not to like electric winches. And uh, the reason is uh, solenoids burning up and undependable to me. And uh, I just wanted to uh, try this drum switch out on that winch. And, uh, you know, you can see I've got a, it's actually a new winch, but I bought it for $20 off Craigslist and all the controls was missing but worked out good because I had a winch that actually sit and got water and it went bad that was on here but this operates uh, it all it does is reverse the current I mean you know you got a positive and negative and then if you want to reverse it you go positive and negative so you see four wires running to it it's wired in here so it just it just switches it's all it does and then you've got a spring-loaded drum inside with really good contacts on it so They've never given any trouble, you know, uh, the way it's mounted, you know, it's been around and it's waterproof, so it's not ever given any trouble on the switch, uh, and to me it beats the solenoid, Now I do have a solenoid on my, on my hydraulic motor over there, and it just runs off this push button right here. Now, you know, you could put a toggle switch here or something where when you hit the lever it did it, but, you know, it's just a two-handed deal, push it with one hand, move it with the other and uh works really good uh you know haven't had any trouble with it uh but like i said it was just built so uh so i could use it on my own i, I you know i it's kind of it's really hard to load a bike with uh by yourself so and like i said especially on a rollback and i don't like hanging them behind the wrecker but i'll show you how it works here as you can see when it came up, my rollers down here, it grabs the bottom, and that keeps it from tilting any farther up. And then it actually keeps pushing until it bottoms out these these uh, shocks on it. Let me see if I can. Kind of hard to do with one hand. But. And then once it bottoms it out, you know it, it's in place. These, these are all just about all the way collapsed, or I'd say they may be all the way collapsed, but and uh, and the roller stays there. Now, when you have a bike on it, it uh, I think it slides back a little bit farther before it starts tilting. But bring it back here, and it'll tilt down probably first, and then come down and touch, and then it just it'll roll forward right into place and uh works good and like i said this is on a on the winch and it just rolls forward and rolls back and uh pretty simple but it makes it nice for one person to load but it's just it's just an old trailer built out of junk parts and you know it, it maybe give you an idea of what you can do if you want to do something like this and uh you know like i said if i was starting from scratch and uh was going to build a trailer with all new steel and and uh, you know, one one really nice. I would actually build the one that the deck actually raised directly up and down on. Uh, I, you know, in my head, I think I could build one that would be a whole lot nicer trailer than this. But 
you know, I've used this trailer since I think 2009. Uh, so, I mean, that's going on seven years and uh, it's been a been a good trailer. Made a lot of money with it. Uh, hauled a lot of bikes with it. Don't haul as many now because, you know, we've got other work to do. You know, back then I would take more calls and uh, go out of area to haul a motorcycle if I needed to. But, you know, we're so busy hauling cars now that uh, we don't haul, we don't use it nearly as much as we used to. But, but anyway, uh, appreciate everybody watching. And, uh, you know, if anybody's got any questions on it, you know, you can ask. Uh, Till next time, bye.